Smart objects are a great way to be able to isolate editing in a separate document. You can use smart objects in a number of ways in Photoshop to either keep a file separate so someone else can worry about the editing for that file, or as we've already learned, you can convert a layer to be a smart object so that any edits applied to it are non-destructive. In this video, I would like to show you why those edits are non-destructive and how they are processed in Photoshop. If we jump back over to Photoshop, you can open up any one of the images, it, it doesn't matter. Um, we have already applied adjustments using a smart object, right? So we need to convert an object to be a smart object, or I'm sorry, a layer to be a smart object. And then we can apply edits to that layer. So we could apply a gradient map adjustment a black and white adjustment, a hue and saturation adjustment, whatever you want to do, you can apply. When you apply an adjustment to a smart object, whether you apply it using an adjustment layer like I just did, so the adjustment is not destructive, or you apply it via image and adjustments, you're applying it to the smart object, but the the essence of the file is separate. It's literally a separate file. If you double click on any smart object in Photoshop, it will open in a new tab. So it didn't look like anything really happened except for the color came back. But if we look closely uh, across the top of our workspace, layer0.psb has been opened. This is a .psb Photoshop big file. PSB files are used for very large Photoshop files but also for smart objects. And so if you convert a layer to be a smart object, it will automatically be saved as a .psb file that's embedded in the Photoshop file. You can open it in a new tab and edit it. So I could bring it in here and I can apply any edit I want to it. So maybe I want to make a selection and I literally want to remove Command X, the middle of the image. If I save this, if I close the .psb file and I save it, and I come back, the edits that I made to the .psv, .psb file automatically flow back downhill into the layer that's been converted into a smart object. And so now, even though I've applied a gradient map, I'm only seeing the parts of the image that still exist. So let's undo a bunch of that. So what you can do is you can convert a layer to be a smart object double click on it and then do all of your editing editing inside the smart object so that your layers panel in your original document stays nice and clean. You might end up with 10 layers, but instead of having 100 layers, you could have 10 in each of those 10 .psb files. And so I could come in here and I could apply a black and white filter adjustment. I can click through the different options till I find the one I like best close and save the file, and when I come back into Photoshop, all of the changes have already been applied. That would allow me to do additional edits to this layer that might be more difficult if I had lots of adjustment layers and mass and things attached to it. At the level that we're going to get in Art1280, that's all I expect you to be able to do. Right click on a layer, convert it to be a smart object, double click on it to edit it, close it and save it. You should also know that it creates a .psb file. If you'd like to go above and beyond, you can embed images that have been created in outside locations. Maybe it's a Photoshop file that somebody has already finished or an Illustrator file or something like that. If you choose the file menu and then you choose place embedded or placed linked, I'm gonna do linked for now, you can embed a file that exists somewhere else. And so I have saved my little sculpture guy here as a Photoshop file. If I hit place, it will be embedded into the document. I'll have to hit the check mark to accept the embed, but now it is embedded, but it has a little link on it on the far left side of the layer. If you double click on it, it will launch just like a smart object would as a .psb file. It is a .psd file because that's what I saved this embedded image as, but the same idea applies. So I could come in here and I could apply a gradient map adjustment layer. 
I can modify this in a number of different ways until I'm happy with it. Maybe I like that. When you close and save the file, the changes will flow back downhill into the Photoshop file. This is really great if you're placing logos. If someone is creating different assets that you're going to embed into your project, and they might change them. They might change the color. They might modify the logo in some way. If they modify the original document, the changes will flow back downhill into your edited document. 